Hello everybody, welcome to Paul Vickery Fishing. If you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button down there. I don't know whether any of you have seen, but this brace of ropes that was on social media recently for eight pounds by Daniel Walcott blew me away. What amazing fish. I really fancied catching myself one of these. So where do you start when you want to catch a two pound roach, eh? Well, I decided on going here. This is Bow Beach Reservoir. It's 285 acres of River Eden water. River Eden is pumped into this place and it is right on my doorstep. The other thing, where do you actually go on such a big bit of water? Well, this bit circled here is uh, one tree point and it's one of the few places that's not the damn wall where you've got deep water close in and water, uh, fish on those sort of big waters need deep water. Let's give it a go. God, it's proper cold this morning. Must be minus one or two. Probably minus two. But this is where I'm gonna have my campaign for these reservoir roach. This is one tree point. Can be a bit bleak on a rough day, but it's one of the few spots that isn't on the damn wall that has deep water within casting range. God, it's beautiful out here. I don't fish this place enough. Oh, there's even fish topping over there. <laughs> That's a good sign. Soak it up, folks. It's moments like this. That's why you go fishing. So yeah, it's one of the important things on reservoir fishing. There's no features above water. It's all below water. And depth of water is the most important thing. It's no good fishing in a lovely spot that's only five, six foot deep. The fish just don't want to know. The visibility is six, eight foot, which means you, you know, a bird or cormorant, or something can easily grab them from above. So roach, bream, all sorts of things, they want at least 20 foot, at least 20 foot. Probably not much more than 30, but 20 to 25 foot. And this is one of the few spots just out there in line, in line with the valve tower. It is around about 25 foot. I'm gonna try and find a topography map which shows the grid lines. Um, and you can see it drops off quite slow, uh, quite steeply. It's quite strange because it is quite shallow in that bay over there, but down there it's quite deep, quite close in. So I'm going to target that. I'm going to spawn some hemp and maize particles for probably a week, see how I can get on, and then just fish it into dusk. Um, I'm not going to feed any ground bait because there are tons and tons of little ones in here, um, so, and I'm not going to feed too much because it's a bit of a catch-22. There are massive shoals of fish in here, and if they turn up, they could clear up what I put in, but also if it sits there doing nothing, it's a bit of a, don't like that. So I'm probably gonna put four spoms in. I'm a bit worried about the depth of water and if there's a tow on it. If there's a right wind, I'll spawn that, that in at 20 foot, and there's a good old tow, because southwest is that way. Good old tow could end up anywhere. So, because these, these reservoirs, when they got a wind, they're like a river, <laughs> not like a lake. They literally race through. So yeah, four or five, every evening at dusk, there's another fish top out there. It's not a very big one, but there's fish topping out there. That's exactly where I want to fish. Looks good. Right, I've uh, come down from my first bit of pre-baiting. I've got a few pellets, some hemp and some corn. And I've been plumbing around with a pipe float and a two ounce lead and it is about 18 foot out there which is close to perfect and i'm going to put two or three spoms i'm not sure the spoms going to get the distance but we'll have a go from pre 
due date in this evening. I can't actually see the valve tower. <laughs> it's a real pea super. I know roughly where it is. Fingers crossed. Clip that so it should be fine. Right, got all the pre-bait covered. Now this is what I'm going to be using for bait. I've got some uh, sweet corn, uh, hemp through the feeder, a bit of hemp oil to go in any ground bait I need, and as a change bait I've got some 12 mil pop-up oilies and never go far with fishing for boats because that's the magnets. Right, that's all the pre-baiting done. Let's go over the tackle. Uh, I'm going to be using a pair of these. Preston Classic Series, they're 11 to 13 foot feeder rods with an ounce and a half tip. I'm going to be using it at 13 foot just because that extra length helps pick up the line and strike the bites. And to, speaking of line and striking the bites, I'm going to be using Preston Feeder Braid. I always use braid for this style of fishing. A, because the diameter is 0.08 for eight pounds um, and wears an eight pound line on mono for that would probably be 0.25 and it picks up more toe and so you need a stronger tip and also hitting the bites. When I first started fishing the reservoir, bosh out at 50 yards, you get a sharp roach tap, you'd be right up here before you connected and that's just the stretch in the line and also the bow in the line. So it's changed over to braid, I think Mike Green put me onto that, changed over to braid, as soon as you get a tap, boom, you only have to move it a yard or two and you're straight on it. So anyway, it's Preston's feeder braid, and then I'm going to have a 12 pound shock leader that's the full length of the rod and back down and then two or three turns of the handle because I'm going to be casting quite big feeders um, and it does take a bit of, bit of, needs a bit of stretch. So 12 pound shock leader, just tied together with a four turn water knot. I'll show you my end tackle. Okay, this is my uh, desired rig. It's a helicopter rig. Uh, just with a little boom there and about three, four inches and a bait stop and a window feeder. These are really good. I like these window feeders. They can be a little bit troublesome to close if you've got maggots in there. But um, I'm just going to be feeding sweet corn and hemp through these. And if that don't work, I'm going to have a bolt rig just with a three or four inch hook link with some maggots into these. And then... Worst comes to worst, ground bait. I'm not, I don't really want to use much ground bait because I'm fishing in 20 foot of water. I'm never that confident it gets all the way down to the bottom. So yeah, so that's the end tackle. Let's see if we can catch some. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed. I'll leave you with this beautiful sunset overlooking one tree point. And don't forget to catch the next episode of Paul Vickery Fishing where I actually set out to catch some big roach. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank new subscriber Cat's Got Fleas. What a brilliant YouTube channel name. <laughs> Made me chuckle. Anyway, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe.